Okay guys, so that we have Node.js installed on our system and we have the process manager that is PM2 also set up. That is a service has been created for PM2. So now it's time to deploy our remote repository that is hosted on GitHub to our remote machine. So firstly, let's see that report repository on our local machine. So this is a very basic express application. So if I simply do npm run dev to start the application in development mode. So let's see that uh, what do we get here? So if I go to this URL that is localhost port 3000, we see that we are getting this message here that is a JSON object here uh, with this message and the node environment that is development and port 3000 and the process ID here that is 39275. So what I've done is that, that I've pushed this repository that is this uh, local repository on remote that is GitHub. And for intentional purposes, I have made this repository a private repository because it is highly unlikely that you might be deploying a public repository to your uh, to your server, but instead you would be deploying a private repository. And why we use private repository is because that here I'll be show I'll be showing you that is how do you add uh, access this repository as a private repository using SSH keys. So for that, what I need to do, I'll go to the settings here, and here. If we, uh, and the, this settings is a pa, is uh, is under this example app which is the name of the github repo and i'm going into the settings of this example app and then what you need to do you need to go to this tab here that is deploy keys and then here what we need to add we need to add a deploy key so if i click here then we see that here we have a title uh, to the key which we need to provide here and then here we need to provide in the public key and optionally we can allow write access using this SSH key but firstly we do not have any SSH key as of now because SSH key that we initially used was to SSH into our uh, production server but this key is for accessing our github repo that is private so let's go back to our server so here is a remote machine and here what I'll do, I'll simply generate an SSH key. So I'll issue a command called SSH hyphen key gen and uh, let me spell it correctly. And then I'll be providing in the algorithm and this time I'll be using the elliptic curve because I do not want to use the RSA key pair, but instead I'll be using this curve that is ED25519 because the keys length is too short for these curves and they are more secure. So I'll simply generate a key pair by issuing this command and now it asks us whether where to save this file. So I would keep it the, at the default path that is under the folder.ssh and the name of the key would be id underscore ed25519. And this uh, curve is also like uh, suggested by GitHub for deployment purposes. So let's simply press enter. And now for the passphrase, I won't be providing any passphrase to these keys. And now we have the keys generated. So now let's simply go to inside the .ssh folder. Uh, now if we do ls here, we see that these two keys have been generated. So this is the private key and this is the public key. So let's simply grab the contents of this public key. So let's do cat id underscore ed2559.pub. So we see that these are the contents and I cannot use pb copy here because pb copy is installed on Mac and not on Linux. So I can simply do cat and then what I'll do, I'll simply copy the contents of this public key by doing control C and let's go back to our GitHub account. And here for the title, I can provide in any title. So let's simply provide here uh, deploy key or uh, whatever title you want to provide here just to remember that oh, why you added this key. So deploy for YouTube, uh, something like this. And here we would be providing in the actual content we just copied. And now I do not want to provide any write access from this key that is from our remote server. I do not want to provide any write access using this SSH key. I simply want to have the read access. So now let's simply click on add key. And now this key has been added here. And now what I'll do, I'll go to my example app. And now I'll go to this code thing here. And now instead of this HTTPS, so let me, uh, let me zoom in. And now instead of this HTTPS, I'll simply click on SSH to clone the repo and I'll simply copy this uh, thing from here. And now I'll go back to my uh, remote machine that is my server and let me clear out the screen and let me go to the root directory. So let me clear out once again. So now what I'll do, I'll simply issue this command that is git clone the SSH URL of the repo and then the uh, folder in which we like to clone this repository. So I'll simply provide an application. So application uh, like this and now let me simply press enter and now it asks us whether we want to continue to connecting. So I'll simply say yes 
and now this is only one time asked and the next time you would be cloning from this uh, repo it won't be asked again and now if i cd into the application we see that we have this application so let's clear out the screen if i do ls here we have all the files present uh, inside this folder which are present inside the github repo so let me show you one more thing that is uh, when we added that key so let's cd uh, back to the root folder and or the home folder and then let me cd into the .ssh folder and if i do ls here we see that this file has been added here that is called known host and if i'll simply cat known host we see that github has been added as known host to our this machine so that's what was there where i just typed yes so now let's me simply switch back to the application thing that is the application folder and now if i do ls and now what i need to do i simply need to do npm install and this is bare bones of node.js why i need to do npm install because there is no node modules folder present here so if i npm i here so it will install the, all the packages here inside this application folder and let me clear the console and just ignore this I'll, I'll i won't be doing this as of now so let me do ls so now we have the node modules folder present and now if i do node app.js the application would be restarted on port 3000 by default so let's try to go to this url so let's grab the url of our remote machine and now let me open it here and now let me go to this port 3000 and now we see that we are getting a JSON response back and we see that the message is awesome it works and the PID that is the process ID on which this node application is running. But uh, wait a minute, in our development app application we were seeing these two environment variables also that is the node env and the port here. But we do not see that thing here and that is because these two variables are only shown whenever you pass them as environment variables. So let's try to stop the application once again. So let's stop the application and let me clear out and this time what I'll do I'll simply pass in those environment variables so I'll say node env equal to production uh, production and port equal to 4000 and then I'll say node app.js and now if I'll go to this URL uh, as you see that the application started on port 4000 and if I reload the page here, the application won't be responding because no application is running on port 3000, but instead it is running on port 4000. So let me go to this URL and now we see that we are getting these messages here. That is the environment is production and the port is 4000. But as soon as I stop this application by pressing Ctrl C, we see that application stops responding because it has been stopped. So there comes the users, uh, use of PM2 that is the process manager so now to start the application uh, using pm2 what i'll do i'll use the same command that is node env equal to production that is the environment variable port would be equal to 4000 and then i'll do pm2 start and then the name of the file in our case app.js and then optionally i can provide in the name that would identify this application in pm2 list so the name of the application would be app-4000. This can be any name. I just simply chose this name just to re re resemble the port here. That is, it is running on port 4000. So I chose the app name to be app-4000. So now let me simply, simply press enter. And now we see that this application is online. So now let's go back. And now let's try to reload the page. And now we see that this application is running on port 4000 and it has a PID of 46413. So let's go once again and let's try to start another instance of this application on another port. So let's start, use the same command that is the environment variables first and then pm2 start whatever, whatever is the start starting point of your application. But this time the port number would be 4001. I would be starting the same application that is app.js and the app name would be 4001. So as you see here that is inside the pm2 list this is the app name here. So therefore I choose this application name here that is 4001 resembles port 4001. So let me press enter and now we have these two applications. So let's go back and let's try to copy this uh, URL that is the IP and the port here. And this time let me go to port 4001 and we see that we have the response from port 4001 also. And the PIDs of the, or the process IDs of both the applications are different. It is 6470 and this is 6413. 
So now let's do one more thing that is now what I'll do, I'll simply save the application that is PM2 save that is save all the processes that are here so that even if the server reboots, the application should come online as soon as the system reboots. So what I'll do, as we can see that the applications are running as of now, uh, just to validate it once again, what I'll do, I'll simply force my system to reboot. So I'll issue a command called sudo reboot to reboot the system. And as soon as I did this, the connection was closed because the system is offline. And now if I go back and if I will try to reload the page, the, there is no response because the system is shut down. But if everything I did is correct, then these applications should be up and online in no time because PM2 is managing these applications. So let's wait for a couple of seconds for system to reboot and we would be getting back a response from these two applications. So we see that from 4001 we got back a response and the process ID is 867 this time and we relo reload this page we see that we get a response from 4000 also and the process ID is 859. As you can see that I have uh, I am currently logged out of my uh, remote server but still the applications are working and they have been restarted using PM2. So let me SSH back again so SSH this thing here and now let me clear out the console and if I do PM2 LS we see that both the applications are online and they are working. We already checked that. So you can issue one more command here that is PM2 monet to monitor, monitor the applications. So let's go back here and let's simply reload the page that is both the pages so that I can show you something. So I reloaded both the pages and if I go back we see that the app on port 4000 we are getting these log statements and if I go to this thing that is 4001 we are also getting these things and just ignore this 404 here because we do not have a favicon.ico present inside our application. So now to quit from this PM2 monitor thing let's simply press control C. And uh, if you do PM2 logs, uh, maybe you can see something else. So here we can see that uh, we have the, log, the logs or the last 15 lines of the log statements from both the application or both the instances. That is app 4000 and then app 4001. So let me simply press control C to quit out. And you might be wondering that why I used these two ports here that is 4000 and 4001. And, uh, it is for a reason here and before that reason I'll, I'll tell you one thing that is running your node applications or directly exposing your node applications like this running on port 4000 or 4001 is like a, is like a double edged sword. So you, might, uh, you, you should never expose your node.js applications directly to the front end or to the client but instead they should be reverse proxied using nginx and that's what we are going to do in the next video and why I started these two applications on these two ports that is 4000 and 4001 because I want to use nginx as a load balancer to balance the load between these two instances so that none of the single instance gets the whole load from the clients. So that's what we are going to do in the very next video.